Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So this sketchbook doodling session is actually a compilation of two different sessions. So the first half will be me working in this normal sketchbook and I'm just basically doing pencil and pencil crayon doodling for a little bit or not doodling, I guess sketching for the most part. And then the later half will be me sketching and painting in a different sketchbook. So let's talk about what I'm drawing for the entirety of this video, which is going to be of Zhongli. And Zhongli is from Genshin Impact. Um, he's actually one of my favorite characters. So I actually tend to struggle drawing him. So I wanted to just basically draw him as much as I could from, I think, a night session which is me painting and then kind of an afternoon session because I was feeling really crappy but I just basically wanted to draw him until I get to the point where I don't want to see his face anymore. Uh, I really do struggle drawing him though so I thought it'd be a good idea to just keep on practicing drawing him over and over and over again until I get a little bit more comfortable. So this part is just basically me using a Prismacolor Scholar and I'm doing kind of like a rough draft of what I want to draw for this kind of little sketchbook doodle. What did I say it like that? Sketchbook, like a sketch page, how I treat sketch pages where I kind of draw one thing first and then kind of draw around it, compiling a bunch of different things together, which in this case is just all Zhongli. Um, so I actually started to do the kind of cleaner sketch on top of the orange and with like a normal mechanical pencil. I really can't talk today, but I kind of goofed and I didn't want to use the mechanical pencil and do the clean sketch with the my book propped up just because it felt a little bit uncomfortable with the amount of pressure I was using to get the darker tones into Zhongli's like clothing and his hair because they get fairly dark so I decided to put the sketchbook flat on the surface but then I forgot to hit record so you guys didn't get to see me do the first Zhongli sketch that is a little bit cleaner but hopefully seeing the other two will give you an idea of how I usually work with this kind of medium or sketching style that I like to do sometimes so Usually when I use pencil crown and pencil together, I tend to pick a lighter color and like I usually pick two colors actually kind of to accent the page a little bit and I've been usually using orange and teal recently but I decided just to pull out the orange pencil crown just because Zhongli is majority kind of like black, brown, and orange or like kind of like gold. So I decided that I would just use the one pencil crayon and then use mechanical pencil to do the majority of the black areas in his clothing or do pretty much all the other values that were not orange or gold. And yeah, so I kind of went ham with the shading um, for the second one. So I went back and redid Zhongli's hair a little bit in the first one, darkening and adding a little bit more of the darker values into like strands of the hair and stuff. So like things are sectioned off a little bit more easily. It just seems like it makes it pop out a little bit more. And I think I talked about this like previously that pencil is my favorite medium to work with. And this is kind of the reason why. So as you can see that I can really push the values quite a bit, which is kind of nice. And I've done like realism and stuff just with pencil. I've done like a lot of dry medium for the most part, but pencil has been always my been like been my favorite to use. So I decided that I will just have fun with these doodles and just see where they take me. Like if I wanted to, I could just sketch them really roughly or I can kind of keep them a little bit cleaner, which is this case, um, that's what I did. And I decided to push the values a little bit more. Um, and I think pushing the values really help for Zhongli just because his hair is quite dark and a, quite a bit of his outfit is actually black other than some areas of like brown and orange. But yeah, so I had quite a bit of fun drawing him today. I guess this would be two days. I did this sketching session on Saturday and then the next painting portion or like the other half of the video I did on friday night saturday morning kind of ish because i filmed i think after 12 a.m so technically it's saturday morning and yeah so i am not putting this compilation in order i did the watercoloring session 
before the se- like this pencil session session. Um, yeah, I didn't think I was gonna draw my sketchbook today, but I decided to crack it open because I feel like it's been a while. After I like I the last thing I drew was probably the eight side by side doodles, and I kind of gave up on them, so I kind of just stopped. But I feel like I just really wanted to draw Zhongli. So yeah, so I'm taking my time actually with these, I guess like sketches, in my opinion, they're still sketches. I know some people might argue with that or some people might not. I don't know. I don't think time really indicates, actually you guys let me know. Do you guys think time indicates and determines what is a sketch? Like if it is a sketch, I guess, or is it? level of completeness or is it just how the artist feels i remember like i remember seeing a poll someone did and a lot of people said that like it the, like it's dependent on what the artist deems a sketch is and the person who made the poll i believe said that they believe that it should be under an hour should be considered a doodle and a sketch like i understand if it's a doodle but i feel like a sketch has a larger range of like it shouldn't be restricted to time i guess i feel like for sketchbook doodling too like i feel like it's more freeing just because if it's in my sketchbook i don't deem it finished work usually because i like doing finished work on like actual like final loose leaf paper or like sheets of paper that's a little bit higher quality usually anything in my sketchbook i don't deem like finished per se so maybe that's part of it too kind of like the mentality of like i keep saying like but the mentality of having a sketchbook and having unfinished work in here makes it a little bit more freeing to me anyways like i feel like i still get that pressure from wanting to have nice things in my sketchbook just because i like viewing back my art but also because i post my sketchbooks online like for a tour and stuff but for the most part like i sketch for myself anyway so it's not too big a video and that's the end of this session nope I forgot. So I did one more on this half and for some reason I didn't record the rough sketch and it might have been because I didn't pull out the little thing that I like my stand that I propped my sketchbook up. I probably just propped this up on my knees to really just sketch it and it's just more comfortable for me to sketch which is kind of the reason why I don't like filming traditional videos while I'm sketching, if that makes sense, because I need to make sure things look proportionate and having it flat on the desk and I'm not like right above it tends to skew um, the proportions a little bit. His, like, hmm, I don't really like how I drew this pose. It was based off of what I remembered a, I think it's on Pinterest. It was like a compilation of just drawings of a person basically wielding some kind of like a long spear but because Zhongli is a polearm user I thought it'd be something similar and I was trying to pull that from my brain because I don't remember what I searched up to find that in the first place and I don't think I bookmarked it so I decided to just remember as much as I could now I'm seeing the mistakes now and I think I didn't like I noticed the mistakes while I was drawing it but I also tried to correct it and I didn't fix it but I feel like I had to bring his chest in a little bit more so I could... So like the curve of the back would make more sense. Now that his back and his chest are too visible, he looks wide? I don't know if it's like thick. Like wide in the sense like if you're standing sideways, your back and your chest are just bulging out. Like the top of your chest and your back. It just doesn't really look right. See, I tried correcting it right there, but I like it was a very minimal change and it didn't really change much anyways. So I should have brought the angle of his chest in more so that it makes sense that his back is arched and showing more than his chest. So yeah, use references if you don't know how to draw something because it will make stuff a little bit easier and understanding it will make more sense, I guess. Yeah, that's... Uh, I don't know. I feel like I didn't really finish this one because I 
didn't know what I was doing. I just remember seeing this pose somewhere. I'm pretty sure it was Pinterest and it was kind of like a compilation of like drawings of a, like a polearm user or like a spear user. I'll, I'll experiment more with figuring out poses for like actions and stuff a little bit later. <laughs> I feel like I'm having fun just drawing Genshin because I love drawing their outfits even though they're very very detailed. Okay, so as you saw that I kind of put a little spoiler of what the final um, piece looked like for this session. So as you can see, change of lighting and even just like the mood of it is just different compared to the first session. I filmed this at night so the lighting isn't too great. But here I'm using the Paul Rubens hot press papered sketchbook and I believe it's about 7 by 10 I think 7 by 10 inches now what I didn't notice about this sketchbook is that it is glued on all edges except for that little center part on the inside um, spine area like where the spine would be and I read on the description because I bought it off of Amazon just because we were buying something and I decided to to just add it on because why not because it would come on the same day and the description said that it was double-sided paper and i'm like oh like perfect like then i can get more use out of the 20 sheets that they have and then i received it in the mail and it's glued on the edges and i do like that it's glued because it will reduce the amount of buckling that i'll have and it'll dry very flat but it makes it very difficult for me to use the back side unless I fully remove the paper from its glued state. So currently I have cut all three sides off so that, that all three are very loose. And obviously I had to cut um, one section from the inside spine area off just so I could go around. So it's kind of hanging on a about three inches at the top middle part. I'll put like an arrow so you guys know what I'm talking about. But yeah, the paper is double-sided, so I technically could paint on that side. Maybe I'll just do tests and stuff, but it kind of defeats the purpose if I paint on the back and it starts buckling and warping the paper because now the paper won't even lie flat anymore. But I guess it's just, it's just helpful to make sure that it lies flat during the painting process so the paper is not like warped and wrinkly. Um, let's talk about process a little bit. So as usual, I'm using my Pilot Color Eno to do the rough sketch just because it is water soluble and I don't mind doing a messy sketch because after I do a little bit of erasing and I add the paint on top, it basically becomes not visible at all. So to make sure that I don't lose my lines, I do go over the Pilot Color Eno sketch with a kneaded eraser first to lighten up the lines and then after I will go in with a normal mechanical pencil and do a really clean sketch so I know which areas I'm painting and the lines won't dissolve. I know some people had questions on how do I not get the graphite to smudge while painting? So if you keep your lines fairly clean, you're not like rubbing the pencil back and forth too much and you're not using too much pressure, you're not like leaving a lot of graphite debris behind, I guess, and you won't be spreading that around with your paint, um, which makes it easier for you to paint on top without smudging it. Another way some people do is that after you've done your pencil sketch, you submerge it into water or you wet the whole page so that the water kind of locks your lines in and they don't budge after painting on top. Um, yeah, so... Now I'm proceeding with painting and I'll make sure to leave any of the stuff that I'm using in the description or in little flags above so you guys know what materials I am using. This Zhongli, I don't really like. I think it looked a bit okay during the sketching phase but like I butchered him really badly <laughs> when I started to paint. Um, but yeah, I like his outfit. Like I really like the stark black and kind of the warmer grays that I use for his like the metal parts of his outfit look kind of nice his face just looks like kind of like a kid's face and it just doesn't really work the one above him looks better like proportion wise in terms of his facial features but i painted him very not detailed i guess like for his skin and stuff this one just felt like it got muddy at some point so i don't really like it Obviously my favorite will be the big one and I kind of already knew that like 
I think out of all the Zhongli doodles I did, I think I liked only one from each session. So we'll see. We'll see. I, I don't know why I don't like this one that much. Besides that, I think after the fact, I keep going in and trying to add a little bit of more like reds and oranges to his face and it got really muddy. So I don't know. He looks okay right now, but I still see like that weird kiddish face and I don't really like it because he's not supposed to be like a, like a kid. <laughs> So yeah, I really want to learn how to draw more like EK men type characters. I feel like I'm just more suited towards or I lean towards like cute stuff, but that's okay. That's just something I have to practice more. So I decided to tape off the Zhongli on the right just in case my hand does become a little bit more clammy or me rubbing the lines with my hand. Usually when I'm painting, I don't rest my hand on the paper too much, but because I've done smaller doodles and a larger doodle, it was hard for me to make sure that I was able to control uh, where I was placing my hand. Just because if I'm working on a smaller area, I like to have more control. So I like to leave my hand on the paper so I can kind of like pivot my hand to some, like some areas. I feel like some people notice this, but sometimes I stick out my pinky while working. And I'm not doing this like because it's fancy or like, um, for fun, I guess. I'm doing it so I have a point of balance when I'm painting, so I'm not resting my whole hand on the piece if I do want to prevent, like, my oils from transferring or for my hand to smudging, like, smudging the lines and stuff. And yeah, I feel like I got a lot better of not resting my hand on the paper for the most part, especially because, like, after going through, like, a printmaking class that I did like I did etching and I did a lot of like soft ground etching and soft ground etching it like takes the imprint of stuff really easily but I loved it because like it would mimic the texture of pencil really well and like I said like I'm a sucker for like graphite and pencil work so I did a lot of soft ground rather than hard ground so I could get like a lot of those soft transitions right like, like that I'm used to um, while working with graphite so but because like the soft ground was so sensitive i wasn't able to rest my hand on the giant sheet of copper that we worked on like i think the largest one i worked on was 32 by 40 or something like that like something crazy big and yeah i don't remember like i remember stuff and i don't remember stuff i just remember the lady who ran the art store for our campus told me she's like oh like what size do you want me to cut down your copper and i'm like no like i want the full sheet and she's like oh like you're using it like are you using it for hard ground are you using it for like um i don't remember the other technique aqua tinting or something and i'm like nope i'm using it on soft ground and she's like good luck and i'm like thanks because uh if it if it screwed up it would have been really bad like i had a bad track record of somehow screwing up my soft ground plates somehow it like everything started to being etched instead of just the lines that i made with the pencil and stuff when i'm transferring it but at the end my three largest plates so i did 132 by 40 i think and then i did two half plates so i did i think 32 by 20 and 32 by 20 or something like that and both of the or all three of the big ones turned out great um i had no issues or anything i just had to further etch and aqua tint a lot of it so yeah okay but like the watching the process for this one of zhongli is just for me is very satisfying i really love like the deep shadows that i got like underneath his hair on his forehead i just really like it it's just like this zhongli was the better one clearly compared to the rest and i feel like I just work better maybe working larger now. I used to do a lot finer lines back then and maybe my lines are just not as thin. I feel like I got more used to it on the second Zhongli, so the one above the bottom one, so like the one in the top left corner has a lot thinner lines compared to the one below it. But yeah, I feel like I just had a lot of fun painting the top one or like the, the big one just like looking at it i feel very satisfied <laughs> i'm not sure if like i really like the end result but like watching the process at least was nice and painting it was very fun like layering up all the black and like the warmer gold color and then i don't know 
I did have a regret that after the fact, I added that dark orange right there. I really shouldn't have. I feel like I should have only added it to the right part of his hair where I first started the orange and it kind of worked out well but the one that I put like near his long strand of hair just it seems muddier so I don't really like it hmm. but for the most part like I think he turned out quite nice he's a little derped out but I feel like all of them are a little derped out I'm having issues with drawing their eyes fairly even I think it's because I'm going fast as I can because I don't really want to spend too much time on the like preliminary sketch. I just kind of want to color, I kind of want to shade stuff at the moment even though sketching is like usually my favorite part. I'm just in a very like rendering and coloring mood I guess. It's probably gonna stop but yeah I wasn't feeling too great um, at the end of the session because I left my window open and my room was very very hot in the beginning but because I worked from I think midnight to after 2 30 I just oh well, I guess it's the end of the video but um I'll talk to you guys next time though um thank you very much for watching and bye